I've said it before and I'll say it again, I love how in Wonder Egg Priority you can have a theory that feels like it gets more and more confirmed every week, but by the end of the show, that theory could easily be proven wrong. I'd say at this point there's three really likely paths that you could look at a character like I going down. You could say A, we're seeing things through a teenage girl's perception, therefore it could very well be clouded in terms of what actually happened. Two, Mr. Sawaki could actually be a predator who abuses and torments and does very vile things to younger women and is using the relationship with the mother as a way to continue on his predatory behavior. Or three, which was the theory that I kind of came up with around episodes two or three, that what if you had Ai's friend who killed herself, there was a jealousy angle, what if she liked the teacher, I also liked the teacher, there was a wedge, and ultimately I could have been one of the reasons that the friend killed herself. This episode, I could easily point out a lot of things that could say, see, she likes this teacher, but there's still so many ways that it could go the opposite direction, and I love that about Wonder Egg Priority, and I equally love that no one knows where this show's going to go, so all theories are currently valuable and could actually turn out to be true. I might go as far to say this was one of my personal favorite Wonder Egg Priority episodes. I'm not sure if I would say it was my absolute favorite, but I like what it does as a midway point in terms of what the show is laying out, the groundwork. This is a show that shakes up the foundation with what can be seen as power-ups, but it also really highlights just what the story is aiming to do by the time it reaches episode 12. Mr. Sawaki is a character that a lot of people have been heavily suspicious of, because for all the ways you could say he's suspicious, you could equally say that's just teenagers making up something when there is nothing. You could easily look at all the creepy shots of this character as just being we're seeing it as a creepy shot just because we're following a younger mind's perspective. Because there's a shot where I comes out of the bath and she's drying her hair and she's shocked and it looks like a creepy shot. Why would this teacher be here? And then in the very next frame, you see the mother saying, hey, I finished getting dry and have dinner with us. He's staying over. Both of those shots are in the same scene. One looks creepy. One looks like an adult coming home from a long day of work. I love how this show is constantly making you question what we're seeing as, is it real? Is it warped? Or is there something more than meets the eye? And this is a show that I even seen last week. Some people were speculating that what if the teacher has been coming over mainly because, well, he's actually attracted to the mother. And what if it's also a mixture of like he's just generally concerned about her not going to school and the fact that there was a friend who killed herself. That's probably going to do a lot to her. And seemingly, if you believe everything at face value, that is what's happening. But we don't know for sure. And by the end of the episode, after having quite a bit brought up the fact that, okay, he's probably the sexual predator, he's doing this because he just wants to be able to prey on this young girl. If it's a young male, they get beat. If it's a young female, they get sexually assaulted. That's generally how these types of predators will go if they're in a relationship, like, specifically to abuse. But then by the end of the episode, she rushes in the pouring rain to specifically go to this teacher saying, I'm ready to go to school. Why would she do that if she doesn't have some sort of good connection to this guy? And what if there is a jealousy angle, not only towards her old friend, but now maybe even her mother as well? There's a lot of ways that they can go. And if you were to ask me, do I still feel like this is going to go a jealousy angle where she actually was romantically interested in a teacher? I would say 60% yes and 40% no. This episode you would think would 100% confirm what I thought, but no, there's a lot of ways that it can go, and I much prefer a show that lays out the groundwork to do multiple paths and all of them being equally interesting than, oh, this is the theory, this is the route they have to go down, they don't go down it, and then it ends up being just completely shit. No, this is a show that has a lot of eggs to work with, no pun intended, and I really like that about it. There's been a lot of great discussion about how the egg worlds function, and there's so many great clues, one that I didn't even pick up on until I think it was last week's comment section or maybe the week before. But someone pointed out the fact that in the egg world, when each of these characters hatch their eggs, they have a specific location that's always where they're fighting. And it relates to the person that they're trying to save and where they killed themselves. In the case of I, her friend jumped at the school, so she always fights in the school. Then you have the bridge, then you have the train tracks for Momo, which most likely is where she killed herself in terms of the friend there. So it's just, it's very interesting to see how there's always lingering and like more complex things happening at any given moment. Something I've brought up quite a few times is it seems like every time you crack a new egg, there's an item specifically for that egg that relates to how to defeat the monster. In this week's episode, we have haters, which you might want to say at face value, oh, saying haters and things like that, that's a little corny. But no, I mean, based on what they represent, 
and how they're almost faceless and they hide their identity and hate from the background and they thrive off of this pain. I think it was the perfect way to depict what we see as haters, especially in a world that's as toxic with social media as the one that we live in. And the fact that she had to use these beads in order to see the hater. I love the idea that they all have their signature weapon which personally relates to them. I mean, you can look at certain characters with the idea of self-harm and their weapon seemingly being a razor blade. But then you have these specific objects which are used to defeat the trauma. There is so many layers to this show and it's absolutely phenomenal. And I'm sure, without a second doubt, I don't know exactly how it relates right now. I'm sure there will be a lot of dissection around this topic. But they got these power-ups at the midway point of the anime. They say a word, they'll come out. They say another word, they'll go away. In reality, they look like a pet. In the worlds, they look basically a hundred times the size of what they are in reality. And I love the idea that they have these ways of helping them, but most likely it feels to me, if we're going off another idea that I've had, that these faceless seemingly dolls that you would think are evil, they're gonna pull a cube or something. I said I really feel like they're gatekeepers that are just trying to help these girls overcome their trauma, and if that is the f actual route they're going, them getting this so-called power-up isn't just anime convenience or, well, I mean, we gotta spice up the formula, we gotta make their action more exciting. Most likely, they've reached a certain point of maturity that they're getting closer to their objective and closer to healing that trauma. The fact that they've encouraged them to work together and seemingly they have a pretty good connection right now, it seems to me that that's why they got that power up, not just because it's anime, but because they've reached a certain level of maturity. And I like the fact that they're not afraid to bring up these topics saying like, what if he is a sexual predator? And then you have another getting obviously and reasonably upset. I know who my uncle is and she very well could be blinded by family, but we could also be blinded by seeing things directly at face value from their perspective saying, oh, he seems creepy. The anime is making it look creepy from their perspectives, and he very well could be the nicest character on this show, but we took things at face value because we're seeing it from a teenage girl's perspective. This is a show that makes you second guess yourself at every possible moment. Anyone who says they have a 100% confirmation, no questions asked, I know how this will end, is fooling themselves. Even if you somehow at this point in time get it right by episode 12, you're honestly guessing, because this is a show purposely made to have different webs, different th threads connected, so anything is possible, and no one's theory is stupid. Honestly, I've seen a lot, and they all logically can make sense based on what we've seen so far. This is a show with layers, and it's not one of those shows that's trying to be too artsy, it's this weird art house film. No, when you strip it down and look at it, it's girls overcoming trauma. But when you add in that anime flair and you add in the weapons and the powers and the egg worlds and the way they're tackling suicides to depression, self-harm, there's so many things happening and these personal stories which you generally don't get to see in anime and when we do they're very cardboard cutout, superficial, written by someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, they read a Wikipedia page about depression and thought that they knew how to make an anime about said depression. This feels like someone who actually understands the pain and how you're able to present it in such a colorful way without distracting from the real world consequences that many people deal with when dealing with so many different things. The show is exceptional and I said it from episode 1, I was fairly sure that this would be just as strong by its final episode. We're halfway through and it feels like we're actually getting better with time. That's a sign of a modern classic in the making, if I'm being completely honest. Let me know your thoughts and feelings and definitely your theories down below. The biggest question that probably people will be talking about, the teacher. Do you feel like sexual predator or do you feel like it's honestly just a nice guy, most likely just wanting to date the mother? Because honestly, either one is equally possible if I'm being completely honest. So let me know your feelings down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you happy new around here. Since the next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.